Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is you Step Down, and this is a Yu-Gi-Oh! video talking about the new box that's coming out. Now, this is a new main box with 180 packs instead of 200 this time. Uh, me, personally, I would like it if every pack was just, like, every box, I mean, was a mini box, because it'd be easier for everyone to build decks. But anyway, I'm going to be glancing over, basically, the cards that I think will impact the meta and uh, some archetypes that have been introduced in this box, and some that have been given support. So, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, main art of the box we got elemental hero gaia now this one's pretty simple straightforward it can only be fusion summoned and when it is fusion summoned you have an opponent's monsters attack and it gains the same amount of attack that you had from that monster uh so basically if you have a blue eyes monster it drops to 1500 and this card becomes 3700 pretty nice but it's only for that turn meaning afterwards you're stuck at 2200 attack with 2600 defense so uh, i don't think it's that great of a card but i do think it'll have some synergy with the wild heart builds that people are doing anyway uh, I think that'll definitely be like a beatdown focused deck, and if you wanted to throw in like one poly, you could do that. You could run Bladesman and run uh, Nova Master. I, I think the generic hero fusions with the attributes are going to see some play eventually. It'll just depend on how many are added into the deck to make you know the difference and make the actual archetype of heroes playable because right now Elemental the heroes just don't get played. Uh, the closest we ever seen them play was when Neos was around and. Neos is far from good. <laughs> but anyway, that's basically it for that card. The main archetype that everyone's talking about right now is Mermail. Now, this is a crazy, crazy archetype. And it basically it basically revolves around this card. Uh, by the way, see Stealth Attack is coming back. Uh, this card, basically, you can discard two other water monsters to the grave, a special summon it, and you can add an Abyss Spell and Trap for your deck to your hand. That's not necessarily important. You don't have to run a Spell and Trap to summon it. It's an added effect if you want to. Then you can tribute one other face-up attack position water monster you control. This card can make two attacks per battle phase. So what this thing can do is basically send uh, Atlantean Marksman and Atlantean uh, Heavy Infantry from the hand to the graveyard to summon itself or from the field to the graveyard to basically attack again. Now, what do these cards do? Why are these cards specifically the ones I'm talking about? Well, when Marksman is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster effect, you destroy a set card your opponent controls and then Infantry you destroy a face-up monster your opponent controls. A card, excuse me. So, it's extremely powerful um, being able to do this uh, just easily just by summoning a card. You're basically getting rewarded um, for summoning it. It's not really much of a cost if you're using these things as the effect to bring out Abyss Megalo. So, it's it's really good, uh, as well as some more Mermel stuff. This deck's going to be expensive as crap to build, by the way. Because there's only two super rares per, you know, in the main box. There's two of each. So you get two of this one, uh, two of this one, and then, of course, two of Heavy Infantry. And then you only get one Abyss Megalo, which is a card you want multiple of. So what does Abyss Spike do? Uh, or Abyss Pike? I don't know. When this card is summoned, you can discard one water monster to the graveyard to search a level 3 water monster from your deck. It's only level 3, so you cannot search Heavy Infantry, which is the one that destroys face up. And in a way, I'm glad, because... I feel like searching destruction would just be mermails all not mermails uh for hire all over again and uh for hire got you know nerfed on the ban list so i mean there, there's a reason why we should go there again <laughs> anyway we got marksman basically is searchable by this as well as some more mermail stuff we got finding nemo we we got abyss gun day i guess that's how you say her name it just cards discard to the graveyard you could target one mermail monster in your grave and special summon it and then the other one uh, abyss hilda if this card is sent to the grave, you can special summon one Mermail monster from your hand. So basically, sent to the graveyard. Abyss Megalo does this effect. Uh, Abyss Spike does this effect. And Abyss uh, Turge does this effect as well. When he's summoned, you can discard a water monster and target level 3 or lower water monster in your grave and return it to your hand. Now this is interesting for searching. Uh, well, this one more for searching up here. This The super rare is for searching, but this one's for recovery. I definitely think playing one of this card wouldn't hurt, especially because his attack is still pretty good, 1700. If you're playing the Umi uh, field spell ability, which I highly recommend with Sea Stealth Attack, uh, this thing gets to 1900 and Spike gets up to 1800. So that's pretty good. Pretty good attack stats, pretty good effects, uh, searching, recovery, stuff like that. And then we got some more Mermail stuff. This one takes three to summon, so it's not as good, uh, but it does have higher attack. And you can, of course, search a spell and trap 
uh, an abyss spell and trap card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's kind of like recovery, uh, similar to Turge. But you contribute one of the face up Mermaid monsters, send one random card for your opponent's hand to the grave. It's not, I, I wouldn't say this card is worth running. Uh, just because it takes three instead of two, this one's easily the best and most versatile despite having uh, the lowest attack. It basically can attack twice and has 26 while Umi's on the field. And if you have C stealth attack, your opponent can't even attack it. So. It's pretty, it's pretty busted. It's pretty good, so I don't know why you would ever run this card. Uh, as far as Mermel goes, they have some equip spells, but they're not really that crazy. Uh, it gains 800 attack when this, when a spell fed disactivated that targets uh, your that targets your monster equipped with this card, uh, negate that effect and send this card to the graveyard. So you can protect, pr basically give them protection from spells. Uh, if you scroll down, you'll find the other one. I think I think there's one more. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, no, not Zone Eater. Get out of here. Get out of here. Uh, Cetus. Basically, it gains 800 attack, and when a trap effect is activated, you can send this card to the graveyard and negate it. Uh, it has to be targeting the monster, though. And then there's Abyss Nose, I think. Abyss Nose? Sure, we'll go with that. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the grave, you can discard one water monster from your grave to your graveyard. Special summon one mermail from your deck at face of defense. Now, this one has the best kind of field swarming but the problem is it has to destroy by battle and it has 1500 attack i don't know why i thought that was a good idea it definitely wasn't so <laughs> i don't find this card worth running a card that's not part of the archetype that i would possibly recommend one at uh one of is metabo shark when this card is normal summoned you can target two fish in your grave shuffle those targets into the deck if it was returned to the hand it'd be so much better but still sending it back to the deck isn't entirely bad either because it does fight stall if that ever happens again uh Good lord, can we not ever have stall in a meta ever again, please? Okay, now we got Mermail Abyss Balin. I think I'm saying that right. Balian? Maybe. This one takes four Mermail monsters in your hand to the grave. Not water. Mermail. Which is ridiculous. And it has less attack than the, level, than the one that takes three. Excuse me? <laughs> uh, basically, when you do target cards, your opponent controls up to the number of Mermail monsters in your grave, which at this point would be at least four. Uh, this card gains 5 for an attack, uh, and if it does, destroy those targets. Then you contribute one other face-up attack position, Mermail Monster. This card gains the following effect this turn. At the start of the damage step of this card, battles the defense position monster, destroy it. Now, that's a bit overkill. I'm going to be honest, that's quite a bit overkill. <laughs> because, first of all, this thing's impossible to summon in this game because you had to discard 4. People don't play this card in real life. There's a reason. It, it's, it's pretty bad. But it's... It, it, it's, it's, it's there. It's there. If you want to use it, it's there. But I just don't recommend it. Um, as far as any other Mermail stuff, it looks like that's pretty much it. Uh, as far as the Spell and Traps, they gave them their two equipped spells uh, for Spell and Traps. And that seems to be it. Um, if I were to recommend whenever you're building this deck and you're buying the box and stuff like that, uh, I recommend at least running one Abyss lead until you can get multiple Abyss Megalo. I think it's just a good idea until you can get it, at least have something similar to it. Um, that you can use and get used to kind of whenever you're playing the deck so it somewhat makes up for it but not really now obviously if you want a real kind of substitute for it I would go uh, whale <laughs> which is really good like the you know the whale the stronghold uh, whale I can't remember the name of it but basically it adds C stealth attack to your field it sets it face down and if you have Umi on the field from the from the uh, ability you just kind of win. You just kind of win at that point. Uh, your opponent has to destroy that um, card, and it's basically hard for them to do that if they don't have uh, proper spell and trap destruction. Speaking of spell and trap destruction, Galaxy Cyclones in the game. Target one set spell and trap on the field, destroy it, and during your main phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard and destroy one face up spell and trap on the field, but you cannot affect, and you cannot activate both effects per turn. Uh, so it's pretty good. It's it's honestly. In my opinion, the best spell card to destroy stuff. It's not quick play, though. It's only during your turn. Uh, but it does get two uses. Uh, and I think that's something to look at. The only thing is, of course, it does not hit Amazonas um, Onslaught immediately. Uh, so I think what we're going to see is a lot of people just activating Onslaught at the beginning of the turn. Like during the, the opponent's draw phase. Just so you can't activate this card and destroy it while it's set face down. Uh, I think that's what we're going to see. And then after you activate this card, next turn, they'll know, well, my Onslaught is gone. I think Amazonists are definitely getting hit super hard uh, with this box coming out with Galaxy Cyclone. Uh, but at the same time, I still think Amazonists is going to be good. It's just going to be harder to play it because 
more instant access to destruction and spell and traps is in the game now. And the reason I think they added this card in particular to this box is because they freaking added the best mirror force. This, this in my opinion, is the best mirror force. Because it, it doesn't destroy, it doesn't send to the grave, it doesn't banish. No, it just straight up sends them back to the freaking deck. It's so broken, I don't know why. Like, I always thought, okay, widespread ruins in the game, next thing's coming up is Sakuretsu armor, right? That's the logical progression, is, is going from the worst and then going to the best in order. But no, they just freaking skip everything else and go to this. Why? I, okay, I can, I can somewhat understand, like, the limit of this card, right? It, it has to be a direct attack. But you know what this does? It means that, it means that Destiny Hero, Mask Hero, is completely dead. It's completely dead, because Anki, if he attacks directly, oh, I'm just going to drag Drowning Mirror Force, now your entire field is gone. That sucks. That freaking sucks to play against. So, to counterbalance it, I guess they added Galaxy Cyclone, the instant destroy one set card, uh, spell card, to basically destroy this. I guess. Uh, this is also a good answer for Treacherous Trap Hole, if you're going first, activate this card at the beginning of your turn before you summon anything at all. Uh, and it's really good for doing that. So... That's basically what I got to say about the two cards that can pretty much fit in every deck at this point. Um, it's it They're crazy. I cannot believe Konami added... I cannot believe Konami added the best Mirror Force. Why? I guess if you were to you'd say like a rival to it would be the um, Storming Mirror Force, I think is what it's called. It returns them to the hand instead of destroying them. I guess that would be the next best one. Um, but really, this is just ridiculous. This is just ridiculous. Uh, and I think... I think if it wasn't already focused enough on spell and trap destruction with Amazonas, I think it's going to be doubly focused on destroying spell and traps with this thing and treacherous trap hole in the game. I think, I think the meta is going to shift towards decks that can destroy spell and traps without their staples like Galaxy Cyclone or Cosmic Cyclone. I think it's going to focus on that. So. That's basically what I my thoughts on Drowning Mirror Force and Galaxy Cyclone. Moving on to the next archetype real quick. We've got UA's Midfielder. This is a level 4. You can normal summon him, and then whenever you do, uh, basically, if you have the field spell on the field, you can search another UA from your deck. So that's pretty crazy. This monster doesn't have the search effect. The field spell has the search effect. Um, but the main thing about Midfielder is that he's ultra rare, and I'm going to talk. I'm gonna have some real talk with you about UA's. I don't think this deck's going to do crap unless you're running restart and if you're running restart then you skip your next draw that sucks that really does especially if you go first um and the reason why is because you literally need this card to do anything this card basically um it is the core of uas it's the play starter it's the only level four in the deck and how uas play and i'm just gonna sum it up for you every one of these monsters like dreadnought dunker uh a rebounder where is he? Yeah, there he is. And Slugger. All of them play with this exact same effect in mind. You can return one UA monster you control to the hand and special summon itself from your hand. Uh, and all of them do that. So they can uh, tag in, battle, and then if you had a main phase 2, you could tag them out. Well, you don't have a main phase 2, so obviously you can't do that. But basically in TCG, that's how they work. And so the thing is with these is that they're level 7. Uh, you see this one's level 6. This one's level 5. All of them all of them basically are dependent on you normal summoning midfielder so you can special summon them. And if you don't get this turn one, you're kind of dead. I can see kind of playing with um, a Zane skill cyber style to summon proto cyber dragons for tribute. I can definitely see that happening and I can see it working. Uh, but of course that requires you to pay life points to do stuff. And none of the UA cards have a life point payment mechanic. So it's not really... I, I don't really think this archetype is going to do very great because of the dependence on that level 4 monster, but I think it does have a potential future. Uh, but let's go over the cards. Midfielder basically can, if, if another one's on your field and another one is in your hand, you can bounce that second one on the field to the hand and then bring out the other one. Uh, so midfielder is kind of like, it's kind of redundant, right? But it allows you to bring out monsters if you already brought them out before uh, because you can only special summon them once per turn like this. Uh, and then Dreadnought Dunker, it inflicts piercing damage, and it, whenever it inflicts damage, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. Very good, very, very good. Um, basically, just being able to destroy anything is really nice. If your opponent's using, like, Canadia and uh, Amazonas, I'll use Amazonas again as, a, as an example. Um, and they summon Canadia because you chained a trap or whatever, and they have it in defense. Well, you summon this thing, do 25 damage directly because it has zero freaking defense, and then you destroy their onslaught. 
it has a lot of potential to be really good. And like I said, if you get midfield to turn one and this in your hand, uh, or even just a field spell in general, the field spell is crazy. Um, and it allows you basically to bring this out turn one. You can definitely do a lot of cool combos with this. Um, and I can see this archetype doing good stuff. You just have to get midfielder to your hand. Uh, but anyway, then there's rebounder. This one basically... Uh, if this card is special summoned during your opponent's turn or normal summoned, you can special summon one UA monster from your hand or grave except itself. So that's interesting. Uh, it's 2200 attack, 2300 defense. Not the greatest stats, but the main idea is it's very similar to um, uh, Scarlet Scourge, the vampire card from the last box. Uh, basically, whenever he's normal summoned, or in that case, he's special summoned as well. You can pay life to special summon one from your hand or grave. But this time, that monster can attack, uh, and, and which is pretty crazy. This card is is actually a really good revival and recovery and also field swarming option. And because it has to be uh, special summoned during your opponent's turn uh, by midfielder's effect or uh, by normal summoning it, you can use it with, like, you know, cyber style and tribute summon the proto cyber dragon to bring this thing out. I can definitely see this card being very good. Moving on to Slugger, this one basically... Uh, if this card attacks your opponent, cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step. Not just spell and traps, ancient gears. This is everything, monster effects included. So uh, it's pretty good. It does not stop uh, onslaught, though. <laughs> Unfortunately, the same thing with uh, ancient gears. They do not stop onslaught. I really am disappointed about that. I, I expected them to, but the wording says at the end of the damage step. So this one ends, onslaught activates. Basically, that's how I can describe it. So that's basically all the UA monsters that have been added. Here's the field spell, UA Stadium. If a UA monster is normal summoned to your side of field, search a UA from your deck. That's right, free searching in Duel Links. Uh, it's very hard to come by. <laughs> anyway, uh, if a UA monster is special summoned to your side of field, all monsters you currently control gain 500 attack. That's pretty nice. It's honestly pretty nice. Uh, attack buff is permanent, by the way. Uh, searching if you normal summon midfielder. So ideally you want to get midfielder and UA Stadium to your hand. The best way I can imagine doing this is maybe tinkering with balance. Uh, and maybe just trying to add like, you know, just six traps to your deck, uh, three of this field spell, and then maybe three Galaxy Cyclone or Cosmic Cyclone, whichever kind of uh, deck construction you want to do. And then adding like three midfielder, uh, two dunker, uh, and then maybe like, then maybe uh, two slugger and one rebounder or or the reverse to rebounder it, it doesn't really matter like which monsters you put in there just trying to get balance to work right uh their last trap card uh their last card actually is a trap ua penalty box so this one is see stealth attack at the start of the damage step if your ua monster battles an opponent's monster banish it until the opponent's second end phase so this is essentially the new see stealth attack uh it's the start of the damage step so you actually beat out amazon so with that said, I don't think Amazonas Onslaught can chain to this. I don't think it works because it's at the start rather than at the end for Onslaught. So I think this actually can beat it. I haven't tested this yet. I will test it on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro uh, in like the AI mode or whatever and figure out if it does or not. But as far as I know, it shouldn't be able to. <laughs> shouldn't doesn't mean won't, but it shouldn't be able to. Uh, but that's basically it for this. Another effect is that you can banish this card from your grave, add one UA spell card from your deck to your hand, helps you get to the field spell, so if your opponent destroys it, you basically can activate this effect immediately, uh, and then search for the stadium, and then normal summon midfielder. So, there is, you know, possibilities, possibilities for some cool combos and stuff, uh, and especially with this card being sea cell attack. It's, it's got defensive mechanics, it's got, uh, summoning mechanics, and, and on top of summoning mechanics, it, it's, it's actually a really good archetype. It just has to get midfielder. Otherwise, the whole deck falls apart and can't do anything. So the last ar archetype that's been added is Kokai Miru, and I'm gonna glance, I'm gonna glance through this very quickly. Uh, Maximus, uh, first of all, I'm gonna talk about Iron Core, because you can't talk about Kokai Miru without talking about Iron Core. So what is this card? Essentially nothing. It's draw sense Kokai Miru. <laughs> uh, basically, during your draw phase, if it's in the grave, you can add this card to your hand instead of drawing. Or send one Kokai Miru monster from your hand to the graveyard to add this card to your hand. So, you can do one of the two. Uh, and most of the time, you're just going to skip your draw phase if you want to get this card back to your hand. Now, why would you want to get this back to your hand? Well, every Kokai Miru monster has the effect where if you don't discard this card... You destroy it, not everyone, but most of them destroy themselves if you don't discard Iron Core or reveal another monster of the same type. So, let's look at the ones that are in the game and talk about how they're good. 
or bad. So we got Sandman. Enter Sandman. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, anyway. Uh, basically, like I said, the destruction effect or you reveal a rock type monster in your hand. This is good for magnets. I've been testing this in Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro. This is really good for magnets. I think magnets might make a comeback. During either player's turn, when your opponent activates a trap card, you contribute this card, negate it, and destroy that card. So, a monster for a trap. Onslaught. Do you see a lot of Onslaught hate in this box? Because I'm definitely seeing a lot of Amazonist hate. 1900 attack, it's a monster of a monster, and it's just, it's it's really, really good. It negates traps, it, all, it ha all you had to do to keep it alive is reveal a rock. If you're playing Magnets or any other Kokai Miru deck, you should be running lots of rock monsters anyway. So it's a really, really good card. Then you got Urnite, I think I'm saying that right. Uh, basically, its effect is, once per turn, you can reveal one Iron Core in your hand, special summon a Kokai Miru, a level 4 lower Kokai Miru from your deck. Field Swarming with 2,000 freaking attack. Its cost? You had to reveal a Beast Warrior. If you're running this card in a Kokai Miru deck, and not any other kind of deck, the Field Swarming effect works, but most of the time you won't be able to reveal something to keep it alive. If you're running this in any other deck, let's say Fire Fist, you're not going to get the effect, probably. <laughs> you're not going to get the effect. Uh, it can summon it. It can, it can like, basically summon monsters to the field. But unless you have another one in your hand, you can't really keep it alive unless you're discarding iron cores, and you don't want to be discarding iron cores. So, I think it's good for the first turn. You summon it, you field swarm, then you let it die. That's just what I think is the best way for you to use it. Unless you're lucky and you have another one in your hand, then you can keep it alive and do it next turn. Uh, but other than that, I think it's a really good first turn field swarming mechanic to bring out Sandman, Sandman and then keep Sandman alive with the plethora of rock types into archetypes. So, let's talk about more of those rock types, right? Let's talk about prototype. If a Kokai Miru monster on the field will be destroyed during the end phase, you can destroy this card instead, and when you do, basically put a token on the field. It's pretty good. It's honestly pretty good. Um, it, it basically gives your monsters protection it has 1800 attack which is really good as well and it gives you a token i don't know what the token would do for you maybe you contribute something <laughs> tribute someone something i don't know but yeah that's, that's basically what you can do i'm not going to read over all the kokai miru because i don't think the rest of these are going to be impactful crusader is just i mean it's kind of eh. if this card destroys a monster by battle add a kokai miru card from your graveyard it's recovery but once again you have to reveal beast warrior and unless you're running this card and this card you're not going to have that too often, and if you're running too many of different types, it becomes hard to keep any of them alive. So, I like to focus on the rock ones. But then we got Ice, basically reveal one continuous spell in your hand to keep it alive, which is weird. But you can send one card from your hand to the grave, destroy one special summon monster on the field. Now, that's a pretty good effect. Maybe run one of this card, but you have to run a, face, a, fa a continuous spell card. Why? Why do you have to reveal that instead of like an aqua monster? That would have made it good and... You know, see stealth attack. <laughs> or mermails, I guess. Oh, no, mermails. Mermails are fish. That's right. Well, it wouldn't even work there. Anyway, this one has 21 freaking 100 attack. If it battles a light or dark monster, negate the uh, effects of the monster while it's on the field. Blah, blah, blah. Not that great. Uh, see, Panther. Once returned, send one iron core from your hand to the grave to return one spell card from the graveyard to the top of the deck. Sucks. Don't use it. Uh, and then we got Doki Doki. I don't think this card's that great because we're not in the field swearing meta where we can abuse it. Uh... But it can bring uh, rock monsters from the deck. <laughs> so, I mean, if you wanted to do that, all you had to do is discard a rock monster. But once again, if you discard your rock monsters, you can't keep your monsters alive. So, I don't think it's that great of a card. Uh, but anyway, then we got this one. This is one I think is going to be really good. Boulder, when it's destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, you can add an iron core or a level 4 or lower Kokai Miru monster from your deck to your hand. I think it's really good. It allows you to search for core, and it's currently the only way to search for it. So... Why not run it? This card sucks. Um, this card isn't really that good. It inflicts piercing, but that's that's about it. It contributes summon itself by tributing one Kokai Miru, but that's about it. That's great about it. Anyway, three thousand attacks. All right. I mean, I mean, it's pretty. It's it's pretty beefy, but I just don't like it. I just don't like it. You have you you can't keep it alive by revealing. You have to discard. An iron core, and I just don't think that's worth it uh, for a monster uh, compared to the other boss monster, which I'm gonna show you. <laughs> it's pretty good, uh, and that's pretty much all the monsters I want to talk about. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to that boss monster. Maximus cannot be summoned or set unless 
You special summon it by banishing an iron core from your hand. Holy crap! You can't get that thing back! Now, let's talk about why it's worth it to do this. 3,000 attack. Slaps the roof of Maximus. This baby can fit so much attack into it. Uh, but also, you can, for free, destroy a card your opponent controls. No cost. Just absolutely just do it. You don't have to discard Iron Core. You don't have to tribute anything. No, no, no. It just destroys for free. Which is pretty good. Now, the cost. You have to discard an Iron Core from your hand, or a Kokai Mirror Monster from your hand, to keep this thing alive. Which is pretty huge, but because it's also a monster, which I think all of these should have that effect, uh, it's more versatile. So you can keep it on the field, but you have to banish an Iron Core. I'm going to describe this to you in the best way I could say about how you use this card. You go absolutely balls deep into this duel, and you either win that turn or you lose that turn because this card is like this card is like a, a duel defining card. It beefy monster, destruction of absolutely everything for free, and it's really easy to get out. It's like extremely easy to get out. There's practically the only cost is banishing the Iron Core, and of course, once you banish it, you're really not getting it back. But if you get this on the field. Your opponent's going to have a hard time winning after this if, if they don't have, like, Floodgate face down. <laughs> and if, if they do, then you can negate it with Sandman. Do you see the combos here? I think Kokai Miru are better than a lot of people are thinking. I don't think they're going to be hugely meta-impacting, but they're definitely something to consider because it's really good. So, I think if you're running Kokai Miru, run one of this because it's good. Did I, did I mention it's searchable by Melody of Awakening Dragon? Huh, 3,000, 2,500, that looks really familiar, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, it, it's pretty crazy, uh, it's a pretty crazy deck. I am definitely excited to run it, but for me, I just spent all my gems on vampires, so I probably won't be buying this box, unfortunately. Uh, but you can, if you have gems and or money, little rich kids with your mom's credit cards, you can buy these these cards and really have some fun with it. Uh, very quickly, going to talk about some other stuff. Aqua Actress, don't use it, sucks. Uh, Ice Barrier stuff's been added to the game. Ice Barrier sucks, don't use it. Uh, and then we got Cloudians are being put back into the game. They were already in, but now they're being put back. I'm not sure why. Maybe there's something I'm missing. But anyway, don't use Cloudians, they suck. Uh, <laughs> let's see what else we got. Um, new Frog card. I'm interested about this. I'm interested to see how Wetlands Frogs do now. Uh... But I don't know the extent of how many frogs are in the game at the moment, so I can't really talk about that. Snowman Eater, what a card, what a meme. I used to use that in every deck just because it was flip, destroy something. Uh, this card. I think we're seeing Dark Worlds return. All fiend monsters gain 300 attack and defense, and once per turn you can banish a fiend from your grave to discard a fiend monster and draw a card. This is discarding by effect, so Dark Worlds will work with this. Oh my. <laughs> It's pretty good. Um, you basically discard, if you discard Snow, you search another one and you draw a card. If you draw Brow, you can discard it with like Dark World Dealings, which you search with Snow, and then draw two. It, there's a lot of combos with this. There's so many combos with it. I think it's a great card. Uh, it just has to, ha it has to have some prior setup because you had to banish a fiend from your grave. So you have to already have a card that would discard, which is easy enough with Dealings and Lightning in the game. I think this card's going to be great. I think it's a really, really great field spell for Dark World. It's also searchable because it says Dark World in the name by Snow. So I think it's going to be really good. I can't wait to see what Dark Worlds can do, maybe to bounce back into the meta. Because I know at one point they were really powerful, but they've kind of fallen off. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to talk about the spell and trap cards for Kokai Mirror. What am I doing? Um, Iron Core Luster. This is the only good one, in my opinion. Um, of the trap cards, anyway. Review an iron core in your hand. You get the activation of an opponent's spell and trap. That's busted. That's that's practically free. You don't even have to discard it. You just have to reveal it. Like, this card was way before its time, I think. Uh, but it's pretty good. This one's like Mirror Force, but, you know, it would be good if they didn't already add Mirror Force. Anyway, then we got Megaton, which basically says, If you control a face-up Kokai Miru, and have an iron core in your grave. Negate that duration of effect monsters effect and destroy it. Skip that. You had to have too much setup for it. And it's genuinely not worth it. There's lots of equip spells. I'm not going to talk about them because they're not that great. Core blasters. Like light and dark battling. It's 
too specific. This one just it protects them, yeah, but uh, uh, it's not that great. I don't think it's too great. Uh, this one's all right. Once per turn, you can discard a card, add a Korokai Miru monster from your deck to your hand. Basically, draw sense uh, Iron Core essentially. Uh, this one's good though. Core compression: reveal an Iron Core in your hand and discard a Korokai Miru monster, and draw two cards. So, a draw two, that's not entirely stupid to use. I think this card is genuinely an alright card. Uh, and I think it has a potential to be good. Urgent Synthesis, return one Iron Core from your grave, especially summon a Kokai Mirror Monster from your hand, uh, or graveyard. But it has to, you have to return it from the graveyard to the deck, though, which is, you know, less than ideal. But you do get a special summon, so it's not terrible. Uh, uh, initialize, basically, you tribute a Kokai Mirror Monster to add an Iron Core from your deck or graveyard to your hand. Field spell is all right. During each jam phases, destroy this card unless you reveal an Iron Core. Each time an Iron Core, a uh, Kokai Mirror monster on the field is destroyed during the end phase, its owner can search a Kokai Mirror monster from the deck to your hand. No level caps, so you can search Maximus. And then immediate disposal. Select and send one Iron Core from your deck to the graveyard. Not, not good. Unless you just really want to set up for Megaton. Uh, but. I mean, it's 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 possibly searching, right? Because you send it to the grave, and then you can use its event to return itself to the hand. But and eh, it's a bit too slow for me. I just don't really like giving up my draw to do that. So that's basically what I think of this box. Let me know what you think of this box down below. It's going to be released on the twenty seventh. So be looking for it then. If you're looking to buy it, get ready for it. Get hypers for it. It's really, I think it's really going to be great, especially Mermails uh, and UAs having the most potential here. But Kokai Miru is definitely not a bad deck. Try it out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check out my other content and social media pages. Until next time, peace out.